Where do you want to be in 10 years? Running your own company? Submitting your PhD thesis? Or competing in the Olympic Games? We cherish special life milestones like birthdays and anniversaries for a reason. They represent continuity and growth, the unbroken threads that shape a person's life. They are a sign of triumph over adversity, of strength and of hope, particularly in the later years when they represent decades of experience. The importance of celebrating life is reflected in physical and mental health, community and family relationships, and a healthy self-concept. Each of these is essential to an optimal quality of life and that is how they work. Where do you want this institution to be in 10 years? This is the question that must have been on the minds of the men and women who played pivotal roles in the establishment of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund in its current form. 10 years on, how has the TED Fund dream fared? Have the hopes and aspirations been achieved. This episode of The Paradigm Shift provides answers to these questions and more. These are the chronicles of the journey to institutionalize research and development in Nigeria. And welcome to this edition of TED Fund, The Paradigm Shift. I am Stanley Bentu. Words like dilapidated, rot, dysfunction, as horrible as they sound, were constantly applied to describe universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education in Nigeria from the late 1980s and throughout the 90s. All hope seemed lost as the situation became ever more desperate by the day. Inadequate funding of tertiary institutions was identified as the major culprit. The government of the day seemed exasperated as it simply couldn't come up with funds to pay for the much needed upgrades for our higher institutions of learning. But the intellectuals of the country, specifically the Academic Staff Union of Universities, got busy in their minds and they came up with a simple yet ingeniously innovative solution to guarantee steady cash flow for the salvation, maintenance, and advancement of tertiary education. The Education Tax Fund was set up as an agency to intervene in the education sector by the Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993, as amended by Act No. 40 of 1998. The act was repealed and replaced with the Tertiary Education Trust Fund Act of 2011. Now the 2011 act refocused the fund towards the development and rehabilitation of infrastructure as well as research and development in public universities, polytechnics and colleges of education. And that was 10 years ago. It's important to look back and celebrate your wins and acknowledge your growth and extract the lessons and set the right goals for the upcoming years. But before we do that, let's look back at the fascinating story of Tet Fund. The 90s, a decade of triumphs and troubles all around the world. The final 10 years of the 20th century began with the dissolution of the Soviet Union which effectively ended the Cold War and the Gulf War where a coalition force led by the United States was sent to the Persian Gulf to evict the forces of Iraqi President Saddam Hussein from Kuwait after he invaded the neighboring country following his accusations that Kuwait was flooding the market with oil and driving down prices. The 90s also witnessed extreme advancements in technology and officially kicked off the information age with the World Wide Web today known as the Internet the first gene therapy trial, cloning, and the first designer babies. 
But as intellectualism was achieving life-changing success through the birth of the knowledge economy, education in Nigeria was witnessing a severe downturn from the glory days of the 70s and early 80s. Tertiary education was specifically severely hit. Physical facilities were inadequate because they were used beyond the original carrying capacities. Many lecturers, including professors, shared small offices. The building infrastructure was poorly ventilated, furnished and equipped. Due to lack of facilities, universities improvised by conducting lectures in uncompleted buildings, open air sports pavilions, old cafeteria and convocation grounds. In some cases, workshops were conducted under corrugated sheds or trees. In every public institution, there was pressure on existing facilities due to unplanned expansion. There were also dilapidated lecture rooms and overcrowding everywhere. In the area of laboratories and workshops, Nigerian public universities had no cutting-edge equipment that could rank among top 1,000 in the world. Where some equipment existed, they had a ratio of 1 to 500 students. Kerosene stoves were used as Bunsen burners in many universities. There was misery everywhere. But following a series of strikes by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, who were frustrated by the situation, the administration of President Ibrahim Babangida took measures to arrest the rot. In December 1990, the federal government constituted the Grey Longe Commission to review higher education in Nigeria. The Longe Commission recommended, amongst others, the funding of higher education through a marked tax to be borne by companies operating in Nigeria. An agreement was signed between the federal government and ASU on the 3rd of September 1992 on funding of universities. In January 1993, the Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993 was promulgated alongside other education-related decrees. The decree imposed a 2% tax on the accessible profits of all companies in Nigeria. This was a homegrown solution to address issues of funding to rehabilitate decaying infrastructure, restore the lost glory of education and confidence in the system, in addition to building the capacity of teachers and lecturers. The Education Tax Act No. 7 of 1993 mandated the fund to operate as an intervention fund to all levels of public education, federal, state and local. This mandate was faithfully discharged between 1999 to May 2011. But there were lapses and challenges in operating the Education Trust Fund. The ETF was overburdened and overstretched and could only render palliative support to all levels of public educational institutions in Nigeria. There was also the problem of duplication of functions and mandates of other agencies set up after the ETF, such as Universal Basic Education, UBE, and Millennium Development Goals. The result was that the decay, rot, and dilapidation of facilities in tertiary education institutions continued to be irritating as funds are only thinly spread. Something needed to change. By 2011, the ETF Act was repealed and replaced by the Tertiary Education Trust Fund Act. This act refocused the organization into an intervention agency set up to provide supplementary support to all levels of public tertiary institutions with the main objective of using funding alongside project management for the rehabilitation, restoration and consolidation of tertiary education in Nigeria. The funds are disbursed for the general improvement of education in federal and state tertiary institutions, specifically for the provision or maintenance of essential physical infrastructure for teaching and learning, institutional material and equipment, research and publications, academic staff training and development, and any other need which, in the opinion of the Board of Trustees, is critical and essential for the improvement and maintenance of standards in the higher educational institutions. Thus, TET Fund was born. Now, there's a maxim that I love from psychologist and computer scientist J.C.R. Licklider, and it goes like this. People overestimate what can be done in one year and underestimate what can be done in ten. Now, this statement might seem simple, but it deserves further consideration. Now, there are two things that are implied 
in the statement. You might aim too high this year. In that case, you might not be able to achieve your goals, which could lead to disappointment. On the other hand, you might aim too low for the decade, and that would be a waste of potential. The implication here is that decade-level planning is better than year-level planning. Decade-level planning helps you to avoid mistakes. Today, on The Paradigm Shift, we'll discover just how true this statement really is. In honor of TED Fund's 10th anniversary, we present something special. TED Fund, a decade in review. The day started bright and early at the conference hall of the Transcorp Hilton, Abuja, with broad smiling faces that captured the allure of the occasion. VIPs and other guests joined the management and staff of TED Fund to mark the intervention agency's 10th anniversary. At the occasion, the executive secretary of TED Fund, Professor Suleiman Elias Boguru, reeled out the impressive track record of the fund over the last 10 years. He revealed that TED Fund had executed 152,838 projects in public universities and other beneficiary institutions in the last 10 years. He said the projects included lecture theaters, classrooms, hostels, offices, road networks, laboratories, and fencing in some institutions in different parts of the country, adding that the fund had also sponsored about 30,000 lecturers for master's and PhD programs in both local and foreign institutions, in addition to many other interventions. It is because of that, and with deliberate emphasis for PhDs, which is a minimum requirement for a lecturer in the Nigerian universities, that when, before 2015, only 40% of lecturers in Nigerian universities had PhD, with tech fund intervention, that percentage moved to 60 percent in 2015 and I can tell you proudly so that at the moment the percentage across our universities for PhD holders is between 75 percent to 100 percent for some of the universities like the University of Ibadan that is a research university and of course most of the first generation universities and I can tell you also I still remember October last year when the University of Ibadan hit the first 500 by ranking in the world, the Vice Chancellor said, we are celebrating that good news that came this week. And I'm happy, ES of Ted Fund, to tell you this has significantly been achieved because of Ted Fund support. <laughs> Still in a bid to boost human capacity in our institutions, the Fund has sponsored over 68,000 academic and non-academic staff a public tertiary institution to attend local and overseas conferences as indicated in the table below. Uh, the table is there. That fund has also been providing support for teaching practice in federal and state colleges of education across the country. So far, the fund has supported over 71,000 lecturers under its teacher's supervision program. Considering the vital role that libraries play in educational institutions, Ted Fund has also allocated substantial funds to public, federal, and state tertiary institutions. Ted Fund has also allocated substantial funds to public, federal, and state tertiary institutions for the acquisition of library books, e-library resources, and academic manuscript development to books in order to promote and support research, teaching, and learning. So far, the Fund has procured over two million books for use in our libraries, 152,844 e-resources and 380,778 equipment and furniture distributed across public tertiary institutions in Nigeria. Earlier in his opening remarks, Chairman of the Ted Fund Board of Trustees, Alhaji Kashim Ibrahim Imam, said the task of revamping education demands a collective approach of well-meaning individuals and groups. He also took out time to pay tributes to the founding members of TED Fund. For the next decade, we are targeting an intervention fund of one trillion naira. 
per annum. And I want to assure you that it is very much doable, it is achievable, and we are determined to take practical measures to make sure that we attain this goal. It's only appropriate for me at this junction to appeal to all stakeholders, starting with the President of the Federal Republic, the Honorable Minister of Education and the staff of the Ministry of Education, the National Assembly, because they need to pass the enabling laws. The Governor of KB State, Abubakar Atiku Babudu, reminded the public of the critical role Ted Fund has played in salvaging tertiary education in Nigeria and that the achievements of the fund were unmatched. He said his state and other state governments had allocated about 30% of the annual budget to education in recognition of its importance to national development. It takes a critical amount, a minimal amount of money to train someone in any, for any qualification, whether it is NCE, HND, or a degree. And therefore, if we compute and we know what it takes to train someone, maybe a medical doctor, and if the university is training 100, we know how much then funding it requires. And if we do that, the, 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 what follows is sensible that somebody must pay the bill. Somebody, whether it is the proprietor of the institution, the government, the state government, or a combination of both. But what we can't ignore is that it takes a critical mass of funding to achieve a certain result. And I think as we move forward with a uh, tertiary education fund, that is the one thing they can help lead. There is a need for our society to be consciously abreast of the funding gap that is existing in our educational sector. Because it will help us mobilize public support in order to mobilize such resources. And it will help political leaders uh, to make the argument and to be supported. Representing the Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, the Permanent Secretary, Sonny Echono, commended Ted Fund for the impact made since inception while calling on other agencies of government to take up inspiration from the fund. So as Ted Fund continues to transform itself, to set higher targets, to rejig its processes and system, identifying new areas of focus in research, for example, in leveraging on technology to improve delivery of curricula, in enhancing its relevance to the immediate environment. And again, we must congratulate everyone for taking the lead with your molecular laboratories in the advent of COVID and how testing was boosted in this country thanks to the contributions of Tetron and others. I believe it goes without saying that such an organization that had made such impact in a short period demands a type of respect, a type of recognition, a type of appreciation that the entire country has come to accord to that for. <laughs> Clearly, your vision of being a top-rate intervention agency, even so early in life, for an institution 10 years is very early, has already been accomplished. The guest speaker at the event was Dr. Musa Babayo, a former chairman of ETF that presided over the transition that led to the repeal of the 1998 Tax Act and its replacement with Ted Fund Establishment Act of July 2011. He took the audience on a trip down memory lane as he explored the evolution of the agency. Immediately after our, inu our inauguration and the first inaugural board meeting in 2009, we clearly established the pathway. And I knew 
from that time that the best the vehicle that we had, which was the ATF Establishment Act, was structurally flawed, and something needs to be done to make it more effective and more efficient in the delivery of the core mandate areas of the fund. But then we had a scenario. We felt it was necessary for us to reform the organization itself in order to make it much more effective, much more focused, so that it will support the board of trustees and the management in the delivery of this important national duty. The Board of Trustees Committee on Appointment, Promotion, and Discipline, FED, and C, was charged with that responsibility to come up with a new organigram for the consideration of the board. We focused first on the Directorate of Education Support Services. We broke it into pieces and created academic staff training and development in order to give it sufficient focus to achieve the goal of capacity building in the tertiary education segment. Dr. Sonny Huku, the Pro-Chancellor, University of Benin and founder of Eco Hospital, was chairman of the occasion. He appealed to governments at all levels to improve funding for education through the reintroduction of study grants, loans and bursaries for students. Dr. Kuku praised Tetfund for repositioning the Nigerian education system over the last 10 years, while stressing the importance of the paradigm shift initiative of the Executive Secretary, Professor Suleiman Elias Boguru. The pain of our universities is the fact that the funding is very poor. And I, I believe that this is so because the situation that used to be and the situation in other places uh, all over the world has been reversed. When I was in um, university about 100 years ago, <laughs> I, I hope you uh, please uh, clap for me. <laughs> we were made to pay fees. We were made to pay fees. And, but my, my classmates, nobody amongst us paid the school fees from his own pocket. The fees were paid by either the federal government scholarship or state scholarship or local government scholarship, or post fees, loans and all. The important thing about this is that when you do that, you then give the institutions, they know exactly the amount of money will come and they can distribute them according to their own specialties, the way they want to do it. And it is not impossible for this to happen. It just needs political will. And uh, I think we'll, the message will be carried back to the minister. It will also be carried back to the legislature and, of course, the, uh, the president. All we need to do is to know how much it costs to train a student. And every student will, will have to pay that or be paid for. And I think anywhere in the world, somebody pays for them. So, apart from this intervention form, I'm saying to all our chairs of government to start a scholarship form and supplement it with a loan form that's a loan. If you cannot get a scholarship because of how good you have been, you, know, so you can get a loan, you can get a bus free. And something that we need to encourage universities to do is to have work study for our students so that they can work and go to school. That is what happens in most parts of the world. The 10th anniversary celebrations were rounded off with some highlights which included the unveiling of the impact assessment report an award presentation to deserving partners. To join in unveiling the impact assessment report, which is being presented as part of the of the tertiary of the tertiary. Here is
is Wishing Tet Fund, many more successful years of maximum positive impact on Nigeria's tertiary education. Well, a wise man once said that uh, it's good to have a great mind, but even better to use it well. Tet Fund has a good head on its shoulders and it's applying all of its energy to maximize the skills, gifts, and talents of the academia to catalyze an industrial revolution in Nigeria through research and development. And that is the paradigm shift. Join us again on the next edition of the program. Until then, thank you for stopping by. Good night.